In this video, we're gonna cover the decision-making process, progressing through university, internships, applying for full-time positions, and then the early career stage. But this story starts when I was about 13 years old. So we're gonna cover that background real quickly here too. And it's important to remember here that being a financial advisor involves working directly with people, often older people, and telling them what to do with their money. For those people that actually listen to what you recommended to them, they need to have a lot of trust and confidence in you. So being a financial advisor isn't generally considered a job you do right out of college. And I also agree that someone should get at least a couple years of experience before working with clients. But you certainly don't need to wait till you're like 30 years old, which is what many financial advisors say. It's really the first two years in the industry that are the most important towards your development of being an effective financial advisor. But before we talk about those years, let's back up and hit the background. I've always felt lucky to have known what I wanted to do for a career from a young age because this eliminates much of the uncertainty that can exist throughout the college years which causes people to change majors and then spend more time and money in college or university than they otherwise would have had to. And you might say that there's no way a 13 year old kid can really know what they want to do for a long term career. In most cases I would agree with that sentiment but for me there really wasn't any debate. Trust me I'm not saying that I was some very mature teenager because that is definitely not the case. So deep, deep, so deep, deep. But in certain areas of life, I was always confident of the future. And my career was one of those. So the story goes, I was riding home with my dad one day. I remember sitting in the passenger seat of his truck and I grabbed a magazine off the floor. I don't remember if it was Forbes or just People magazine or what it was, but there was a story that talked about financial advisors and how they report very high job satisfaction relative to many other careers and they can also earn some pretty good money. I mentioned to my dad that it looked cool and it could be something that I might want to do in the future. So he explained to me a little bit about what the stock market was and how financial advisors help people utilize the stock market to build wealth for themselves to eventually achieve financial freedom. Then we talked about it for maybe three minutes and I kind of just decided that that is what I wanted to do when I grew up. Now with having the goal of working in the finance industry in the later years of middle school and the beginning of high school, I certainly was trying to prepare to set myself up well to go to a college where I could study finance. Lucky for me, there was a fairly local university that had a really highly ranked undergraduate finance program. And because of that, my mind was pretty much made up that that was the college I would want to attend. I went to a really small high school that was not academically challenging, but part of the university that I wanted to attend, their acceptance policy is that they wanted candidates, high school students, to have taken the most difficult courses possible. So I applied and was accepted to this program where I could take AP high school classes at a local university throughout my high school years. Even though that this channel is mostly about the CFA and CFP exams and how to study for them, I'm not a big fan of school or academics in general. I don't mind it, guys. All of my effort there then throughout high school was just focused on getting accepted to that college I wanted to attend. I was lucky to get accepted there and I spent the first year of college really just doing general classes. There wasn't much focus on the finance curriculum and I also wasn't partaking in the business club at that university yet either. A more important part of this story is how I utilized summer internships after each year of college to build up my resume to set up well once I was applying for full-time jobs later on. My freshman internship was a really good resume builder for eventually becoming a financial advisor. I was really lucky to get that position though. I basically got it because I had a connection through a family friend with someone who was a financial advisor and I asked this person if I could work at their office over the summer they said, yeah, you could work here for free and just do a few things around. And I said, hey, I'll take that. Now I mentioned this internship looked good on paper and that's because it was with a firm that had a reputable name and I could name drop a couple things and list out in the duties that I performed some pretty relevant type topics to the financial planning industry. But in reality, a lot of my time was just spent scanning papers. So it really was not all that fun of a job. The internship I worked during the summer after my sophomore year of college was a little bit of a scam. It was offered through a pretty new and regional futures trading firm that had kind of an educational program for college students who liked trading and wanted to potentially make it a full-time career later. They accepted like 25 or 30 kids to the program, so I was happy to get in because I was kind of interested in just trading financial markets right then. There was almost no education involved here though, and they kind of just sent you a computer and said, hey, here are the market hours and here are the securities we want you trading in. Here's an account with a fake hundred grand. At the end of each week, send us your trading profits or losses in this spreadsheet and we will get back with you. I did that for, I think about 10 weeks. I never really made or lost much money. 
I almost had no contact with the managers at that firm. I got no education. I don't know if I provided them any value. I certainly didn't get much out of it. That one was also an unpaid internship. And actually, I don't even think I ever listed it on my resume afterwards because it wasn't relevant to financial advising, which is obviously the job I later decided I wanted to do. Backing it up a few months though, during that sophomore year of college is when I did start to participate pretty actively in the business club at the university I was attending. And that was a very beneficial experience. I don't know exactly how other business finance or investing clubs would compare at other universities, but the one I was involved in provided very relevant real world work and experience towards certain projects like IPOs or equity research, uh, portfolio construction, leveraged buyouts, many different topics. It was really through this business club that I learned about many of the different areas within the finance industry and cemented my understanding that I wanted to work in wealth management. I was still very active in that business club doing other projects throughout my junior year. And then in the internship after my junior year is where I really got some good exposure to the industry. This internship was with an RIA. They were a couple hours from where I was attending university. So I actually like moved and went and got an apartment. I was getting paid in this internship. Hello, I like money. I was mostly doing reporting of portfolio performance some client service, and some investment analysis for a few of the partners at the firm. Their investment management model was in stock picking. They managed money for high net worth individuals and trusts, all in non-qualified accounts, so they couldn't manage any retirement accounts. They had a list of like 50 or 60 of their top recommended stocks. To me, I never really saw too much rhyme or reason to how this list was constructed, but then each of the partnered advisors would build portfolios for their clients using a certain combination of those 50 or 60 stocks. Probably the most valuable thing about this internship is that it helped me to Side that I did not want to work in institutional wealth management, but rather I wanted to do financial planning. The job just seemed very dull and almost 100% of our relationships with clients was predicated on performance, which means to me like if we didn't do all that well in any one or three year period, why wouldn't they just take out all their money and put it all in a single ETF? Because that would be kind of similar to how the firm managed money anyway. The parts of the job that I enjoyed more were some of that report construction and working with the clients directly. Then about halfway through my final year of university is when I really dove into the full-time position hiring process head on. Now I'm not going to get into the details of that hiring process here because I've talked about it in depth in a hand handful of other videos, but basically it involved contacting like over a hundred different people and firms and saying, hey, I wanna apply for this job or hey, this is the role I can fill within your firm, will you interview me? Many of the interviews were for a client service position in the wealth management industry, and the interview specifically in which they gave me an offer and I accepted and I still work for the firm today was for one of those positions. In the later parts of that interview, the two managers had asked me about my future career goals and I was very honest with them about how I wanted to eventually become a client facing financial advisor. I know I've said I've felt lucky several times in this video, but again, I was really lucky to be sitting in front of two individuals who were hoping to hire a new person into a client service position that they could eventually develop into a financial advisor to add to their team. So when they were at least halfway impressed with me throughout the interview, interview, but then they heard about the fact that I did want to be exactly what they wanted someone to become in the future, it was kind of a perfect match. With the offer letter I received from them, it actually showed a timeline of progression in how my position would develop into being a financial advisor for their firm, which was just cool, really exciting for me. Because remember, this is a position that I had heard from a handful of other people throughout my college years that you can't really do until you're like 30 years old, and these people are telling me, hey, you could be doing this when you're 24, 25. My first 18 months in that client service position went really, really well. The first First six months, I did all of the regulatory licensing exams in the United States, like the Series 7, Series 66, and some life and health insurance licenses. And I also would say that my performance in the job was above average. They're really happy with the work I was doing, but maybe more importantly, my emotional intelligence and the fact that I worked well with many different types of individuals. I didn't get frustrated in difficult situations, things like that. So it ended up kind of being an accelerated timeline to what they had originally presented me with in that offer letter towards me becoming a financial advisor with the firm, which is how I got promoted to that position at age 23. They hired me shortly after I had turned 22. I did 18 months in the client service position. So I was a few months shy of turning 24 when I started working face to face with clients. A real challenge came for me though about six hours after I had received that promotion because the first client that I sat down with, I embezzled all of their money. I basically just punched in my personal bank account information, wire transferred all their money out to my bank account, and then I just fled the country and went straight to Tulum, Mexico to live in paradise. It is every financial advisor's dream to eventually embezzle millions of dollars from their clients, take all the money to Mexico, and live there for the rest of their lives, so I felt very fortunate to have accomplished this at a very early stage in my career. I blew through the $3.5 million in about a month in Tulum, and so I had to hike back up to the United States. I got back on a Wednesday afternoon. I knew I couldn't go to my house because the bank had foreclosed on it already, so I just walked straight back up to my old place of employment, 
ripped jeans. My feet were all bleeding with blisters. I knocked on the door. My hair was a mess. And I said, hey, can I work back here again? They welcomed me with open arms. And ever since then, I've been really happy with the career choice. If you've gotten to this point in the video, it means that you watched the whole thing. The YouTube algorithm loves the long watch times in terms of total minutes watched or just a percentage of the video. So I very much appreciate you being here. If you could also like this video and subscribe to the channel, if you haven't done either of those things yet already, those are very appreciated as well. So as always, thanks for watching.